All of this material started out as eight quarter rough sawn ash. And I went through a rough milling process to break everything to a rough length, a rough width, and then resawed everything to a rough four quarter thickness. And I've laid everything out on this table to let it sit over the weekend and give it enough time for the internal stresses to do what they need to do before I mill to final thickness. So now I can pick up here today and I need to go through my uh, cutting list to kind of make sense of all this stuff, but all the pieces are here and now we can go ahead and mill everything to its final thickness, final dimensions, and then start with the joinery. Once everything was jointed and planed nice and flat, I want them to remain flat during the glue up. And the easiest way to do that is to have some type of mechanical alignment. In this case, I'm using biscuits. Biscuits are just there for aligning the top panels or the top surface of this panel. And that way it shouldn't shift at all during glue up. Now, one thing that I completely forgot about as I was milling all this was the uh, the, the, the small panels for the seats. So after getting this glued up, I went ahead and did the entire process and got those two panels glued up as well. Now those are small enough where any type of slippage is, is a lot more manageable, especially towards the center of the panel. So for those, I did not use biscuits. For like 99% of everything that I do here in the shop, uh, project based, I make a SketchUp model first. I get the design worked out in digital space before coming here and actually cutting everything. It just makes things a lot more organized, a lot more efficient. And here's a great example of organization by first doing the SketchUp model. So I'm at a point where I'm about to mill all of my parts down to their final thickness, their final dimensions, but I've got a lot of parts going on here. And one way to stay organized is to label all those parts on the part. Well, that doesn't make sense here because I'm about to mill all, all the faces um, flat and parallel down to their final dimension. I'll lose all of those labels. So instead, something that I find really handy is to make one of these layout diagrams on the computer. And this is all of my information that I need to build this project, all of the dimensions, and all of this is subject to change. I can write my notes on here, but here's an added bonus. As I'm working, I lay out all of my pieces to that exact same layout on my diagram so I don't have to label anything. I know that these are in this specific spot on the layout and that is my chair back legs and so on and so forth. I can know, I know what each individual part is just by referencing off of my layout diagram so long as I stay organized and keep the pieces in that exact same layout. Next up is milling all the other pieces to their final dimensions. All of the milling is done and now it's time for joinery and this should be very fast with the help of floating tenons. I'm just using uh, six millimeter floating tenons, specifically dominoes. And for all of the rails or all the cuts on the end grain, it makes more sense to bring the material to the tool and all of the face grain cuts, uh, it makes more sense to bring the tool to the material. Team J for the win. Not only does that not make any sense, but I literally have three times as many joints as you. Not my problem. Time for water. Woo, Team J for the win, woo. Yeah, well you didn't have as many pieces. All right, the dry assembly is done, and this is pretty cool because the, the pile of pieces, the components, they're starting to actually look like something. But I did, want to, I did want to put everything together just to make sure everything lines up as it should, and we're good to go. 
So we are good to go. There's a lot of little self-explanatory detail work that needs to be done, rounding over edges both before and after assembly. Uh, I also need to cut an arch in the top of both chair backs and then finesse that at the belt sander. I'm gonna cut a radius on the top of both chair backs and I think I can do all that at the belt sander. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to cut a slot or a dado rather all the way around the inside of all of these chair rails as well as the table rails for the tabletop hold down clips. I gotta shape the seat bottoms. Uh, a lot of little detail work. So I think I can shut up for a little bit. All this stuff is pretty much self-explanatory from here on out and we can get some work done. This is one of those tabletop hold down clips that I've been using for many years. It's just a Z-shaped piece of metal that has a hole in one side. The hole is where you screw through and into the tabletop or the, the chair seat to attach it to the frame down below. And these are important to use a system like this because it allows for expansion and contraction of the tabletop. If you don't allow the table to contract freely, the tabletop, the solid wood panel, it's gonna crack no matter what. So in this case, I have two setups here. One's better than the other. And it's not just a matter of uh, making a slot or a groove at a greater distance away from the fence than the distance from the bottom of here to here. So this is 3 eighths of an inch. This may vary depending on manufacturer, but this is 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom of here to the top surface here. And this is 7 sixteenths. So while it doesn't fit in, you have to lift this into place and now you have a gap down here for the screw to pin everything down. That sounds like it's a good fit, but it's actually not because the distance is not great enough. The bottom edge of this tab sticking into the groove needs to be parallel with the bottom of the surface here. If not, then what we have here is the bottom edge going down a little bit. It's digging into the wood and that friction is gonna not allow this to expand and contract freely. So instead of 7 16 this particular clip actually needs a half inch distance, like so. That way, the bottom of the clip is now parallel with this, and it will allow the tabletop to expand and contract while at the same time having a nice size gap down here for the screw to pin everything in place. So as it's nice and tight pinned in place, it's not gonna move around, but the, the seasonal expansion and contraction, that type of movement, it's gonna have a less friction and allow this to, well, expand and contract and move as necessary. So this distance from the bottom of here or the distance from the, the fence to the table saw blade is actually pretty important. You don't necessarily have to use a table saw, you can use a biscuit jointer or anything to create a slot, but make sure you do some tests so that the bottom of the clip is parallel with the bottom of the surface right here. With the fence position established, that one half of an inch, the blade is lowered to about one third, one half the thickness of the material, and then all the pieces are ran through. And because we're using the table saw, this gives a nice continuous dado along the entire length of the piece, allowing you to put a clip basically anywhere you want. Now I can finally begin assembly, and I'm probably gonna do this in a few different stages just because I don't wanna put nine different clamps in different directions trying to put a chair together. It just doesn't sound fun.
So this project is like 99.9% .9 done. Um, I wanted to uh, put a coat of Armor Seal Seal Coat urethane, who is a little short, <laughs> uh, on all these pieces, but I ran out and that's something that I have to order in. So that's okay. I've got two coats of Seal Coat Shellac on all of this. And um, it's not like I can actually put it to use right away right now anyway because everyone in my house is sick including myself my daughter's got the flu right now so unfortunately i can't have that like really exciting ending to this video uh, if you follow me on social media or my second youtube channel then uh, i'll probably post something when she actually does get to see this but this is something that we wanted to make for her for quite a while and of course making it just makes it feel a little bit better than buying it if you're interested in making a set of these yourself i'll have a detailed set of plans for various different options for uh, assembly and getting the job done. You don't necessarily have to have a domino or want to do floating tenons to do this. There's a lot of different ways to accomplish the exact same uh, task and get to the end result. So I'll have a link in the description to a set of plans uh, if you're interested in those. Big thank you and a shout out to Rockler Woodworking and Hardware for supporting this video and supporting my content over the past year and a half, really. They've done a great job of helping me out and just being very fluid uh, and, and accommodating, helping me, especially setting up this new shop. So uh, if you wanna help support what I do, then consider helping out and uh, checking out Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. I'll have a link down in the description, well, a lot of links to some of my favorite Rockler items as well as some of my other tools that I can't live without here in the shop. And you can find those on rockler.com. Uh, if you're interested in staying up to date with everything that I publish, go to my website, jacecustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter. I've got a couple giveaways going on um, throughout the year and uh, a lot of other fun stuff that I don't publish here on this main YouTube channel if that's where you're watching this video. You guys take care, have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.